Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan, also known as the PC Genie, and today we're going to be looking at how to make clubs like this, or like this. So basically, I'm not an expert in DIY, but one of the few things I seem to have done enough times to become semi-competent is make sort of clubs and cudgels and things out of wood. So we'll be heading down to the forest, I'll be showing you what sorts of tools you need, very few, don't worry, and basically showing the sorts of processes that I do to try and make some that are simple in design, but yet are reasonably effective. This is a forest. It's a place where people grow trees, just in case you live in a desert or something, and where we'll be able to find lots of sticks. And here's one just now, look at that. Which is arrived, found one already, but not really the right kind of thing. Now in terms of tools, yes, you could bring something like an axe or a knife or something, but when we're in this part, we're just collecting wood. To be honest, you don't really need anything. In fact, if you find a branch that's got little twigs growing out of it, you could just use another stick or something and just hit them off or bend them off your arm. And one of the main things we'll be doing is when we've got a suitable piece of wood, and we think it might be okay, you do the tree test, which is this. This is sturdy, but obviously it's the wrong shape. It's not broad enough, so off it goes. But that's the general concept, so let's go. Ah, this one's a lot more sturdy. There we are. Oh, uh. mm. Might not be quite wieldy enough though, so uh, let's promptly dispose of this. I'm not Scottish, but I've been there once, so. Uh. Yeah, let's go. So I found this on the way, obviously on stick. And here's another one I'd literally found. I just walked through the gateway and I found this. Now, bearing in mind, since we'll be using tools later on, we can get something much longer than we need and then just cut it to size. There are many different ways we can do that. But uh, let's do the tree test, shall we? So this is definitely a tree. So, first start with this one. Hmm. Might give way, you'd be surprised. <sighs> yep. So this one's a dud. And after this one, find a bit that's not got lots of twig bits that'll dig into my hands. Three, two, one. <clears throat> Ooh. This one shows promise. Let's try this way up. Yeah, so just like a steel sword, it vibrates, it did hurt my hand a bit, but it absorbs rather than just snapping. This is good in a way, I might keep this here for later. So here's another one I found. Now obviously for a cudgel that we're after today, it's not going to do the trick so much, but uh, if you're after something more of a stave length, this bit seems to be, well, this bit's a bit thin, but this bit isn't too bad. Another demonstration of the wood, again, we do the tree test. I can even hold it towards the end, and you can hopefully see that it vibrates rather than snapping. <laughs> well, shut up, Mum. So, yeah. Okay, maybe that does snap. Well, that's only the thin end though, isn't it? Isn't the other bit good still? Have a look. <coughs> this is the same wood. Um, let's see if it's older. Actually, this might be a real crack, or it's just the bark. Sometimes you have to peel the bark off to tell if it's actually cracking or whether it's just cosmetic. Yeah, 
like microtransactions in most video games. It's just cosmetic. So something of this type of wood, the taller, would have made an okay sort of stave, but uh, it isn't, so... Let's carry on. So these bluebells that are growing here in this wood, if you look at them closely, you'll see that they're quite different from the ones that are growing on the edges and borders of everybody's gardens. These are the natural wild English bluebells or British bluebells or whatever. The ones that people have in their gardens have got bigger trumpets and probably more flowers, I think. Um, and they're imported from Spain, so they're not natural to this area. So here's an example of a branch. Hang on, I'm going to focus on movement so I might not point straight at it for a sec. Right, here we go. So this particular kind of wood, let's see if my shadow can be out of the way. Around here, this branch, apart from the fact that it is a bit long, I mean you can, on the thinner bits, just stand on it and snap it. But the reason I won't be picking it up is because I have worked with this kind of wood before and I find it is rather brittle. It looks all right on the surface and it is reasonably sturdy, but it has no flex. So essentially it looks fine, even off you, on a few lighter hits, but as soon as it's just past the threshold, instead of bending, it immediately snaps in twain, like glass. Can you see it? Maybe you haven't got good eyes then. Hang on, let's see if this is the right focus. There you are, I'm so shaky. There we are, digital zoom, sorry about guys. Ooh. There you are. There it goes. Ha <laughs> ha! So here, we see an example of a better kind of wood. Now, uh, oh, there's a branch in the way. Uh, if you wanted me to be an encyclopedia on what is what wood, I will probably fail miserably. But I know that whatever this thing looks like, it's an alright type of wood. Uh, look up on Google or something. But um, basically, from what I've seen of these, they can be a bit brittle sometimes, and they do snap under a lot of strain. But they absorb shock a lot better than the other wood that I showed earlier. Um, the problem is they do usually come in thinner branches like this, but when they're proper larger trees and branches, you can get some pretty decent wood out of it. All right, so this is one that I'd found. It's pretty much ready-made, and you'll see in some historical examples of clubs, you've got the, uh, what if you call it, kind of a burl, or the knot, basically from where it starts to get to the root, here and it naturally thickens and also strengthens a bit so it makes it good almost like a hammerhead. These bits are going to be kind of brittle so I'd probably cut these bits off to about here but it's still pretty good. It is a bit curved in this direction but it might be okay this way. Now here it's already split so I'd, I mean it's splinter? Yep, hang on, splinter on my hand. This is one of the occupational hazards but no um probably cutting up to about there it would make it pretty okay as some sort of two-handed club it's fairly lightweight and so my mother tells me this and also this right here next to me are silver birch i'm not sure but this sort of wood again it tends to be fairly resilient it will snap under enough pressure and i mean it's not quite as flexible as maybe something like you would or perhaps ash is pretty good stuff. But this is, I'd say it's pretty good, it's all right. It'll certainly do for the job. So uh, this isn't, these are candidates. This obviously can make something like a single-handed cudgel, probably use somewhere along this end, cut parts like that off. And it's quite big for my hands, but I can use various tools, whatever I like, to basically shave it down and make it fit comfortably in the hand. And then as it tapers to this very stout end, it means it's got a lot of weight at this end, and then it can taper down to a nice handle here, and then I usually let it bulb out on the bottom end so it doesn't slip out of the hand.
And now for the classic tree test. Now I know this bit's already split, so I will probably be going from about yeah here. Now I won't hit it. It is a bit cheating, and it's the most extreme test if you hit it around here. If you want something that's absolutely practically indestructible, and I'll actually do that on this piece of wood, you basically hit it further towards the middle, and that really tests it harder. Whereas if you want something that's durable, but doesn't have to be extreme, hit it towards the end. So here's the less extreme version. Yeah, it's pretty sturdy. Now if I hit it around here, obviously that's causing it to, well I don't know the physics behind it, but basically you snap more often when you hit them around here rather than at the very end. And they sort of start to try and bow out either end and go snappity snap. So let's test it and... Ugh. Yeah, a sturdy. Good stuff. Now I'll test this other one. So as I said, um, I probably won't do the more extreme test. It's a lighter version. I don't expect it to be one of the most rugged cudgels, but I'll test it towards sort of the end. So I'll test it probably about here and also a bit further back on here. So firstly, and if you're interested about what I'm doing in terms of position, I mean, you can really just go like that any old way, but um, I sometimes like to go into this, which is the guard lady stance. It means that I can step forwards as I'm going in and deliver more force so it's the most extreme impact. So that if it is going to snap, yeah, it'll happen. If it doesn't snap, you've got a keeper. So, there we are. I made sure. I was on this part of the slope, so if I was going to fall, I can basically sort of catch myself towards the tree. But uh, be careful, I'd usually recommend not having a tree on a slope, or being in some sort of position where you're going to be stable. Ideally, just have a tree that's on flat ground somewhere. I'm showing them now, but you can just wait, carry them along, find the ideal tree, and then give it a whack, literally. So. As we all know, I am a giant of a man, right? Even though I'm only five foot seven. I mean, that's the average height for a medieval person, right? So let's give this one the tree test. Uh, <coughs> it's dirty. Now, I've just finished doing that little joke test, but oh my word, look what I found. I was looking at these sticks and thought, oh, you know, might be all right, and then Oh, it's practically a ready-made quarter stuff. Oh, that's nice. And this has got a slightly thicker end. This is pretty good on its own. But then at this end, oh, -ho, it means business. Oh, let's clear the moss. And there we are. Look at that. In fact, let's go up here. Stand against me. Look at that. That's an ideal height. It's about six feet tall. I'm five foot seven and cross compare. That's brilliant. I feel like I'm George Silver. George Silver Birch, perhaps. So this particular log is too long for me to take into the car, and I can't snap it off my foot, because actually this type of wood is rather ideal. Again, I can't tell you exactly what type of wood it is. What I know is I've made clubs and things from it before, and it's pretty sturdy stuff. Um, I think it can be quite brittle, but the thing is it's so tough and hardy that I rarely ever see that happen. It makes the best sort of stout and thick clubs, basically. So here's a load of freshly cut wood in the spring. Um, essentially, this is a treasure trove. There are a few different types of wood. There's that birch stuff and there's the other thing that I said was pretty good. And you look at these, and quite a few of them are quite stout, they're quite straight. They've, some of them have got a few knobbly bits on them, like here. You'll see when it's got the knot, hang on, that's my foot and my stave. This would be good for the end of a club. So I saw this bit off, around the top. This would be the very top. And then it's got a spike. I'd probably shorten it for durability, and then sort of have it fairly dull, I say spike, and then it's fairly straight grained up until this crook here, so I could cut it off maybe at that bulbous bit here, 
and then it would be perfectly fine. But um, we'll see, in fact, I'll see if I take it or not. It depends on what the final candidates are. So here's another one. Uh, it won't make my candidates because it's too small for me, but uh, if you want something smaller and lighter, this easily fits in the hand. Same kind of material again. Seems to be a particular section because this is a managed wood, it's not a natural wood, so you've got lots of the same type of tree growing in an area ready to cut down. And this, it's reasonably long. I'll give you, here's an idea, compared to my hand, a bit smaller for a man. It would be all right for some people, but like I said, I'm after the more stout ones, so this won't make the final cut. Let's try left hand throw. Not very good of my left hand. So this here is another example of something that's the right kind of size and shape, but this particular wood is rather brittle. So it would pretty much just snap straight away. Nobody messes with me. I'm little Johnny. <laughs> Can I pass? Probably. Oh. Alright, so now we do what should be the final tree test. If it fails, I'll find some more wood. So here's one of my candidates. Oh. Use these bits, this is the weirdest tree test I've ever done. <laughs> the uh, knobbly bit's fallen off, but yeah, it's certainly sturdy. So, next one. The quarter star. My favourite to be very good, but obviously if it's fragile, that's a shame. I live to fight another day. <laughs> My hands, yep, that's a vibrator. Ah. Ow. Oh, not vibrate, you know what I mean. Anyway. This is sturdy, so this one makes the cut, or makes the smack, and uh, this one does too. So, uh, there we go. So I'm not going to be using this particular piece of wood, but just to demonstrate when I talk about using sort of foot snapping techniques, so there you can see. I don't need any tools or knives or anything. If I want to get this to shape, let's say I wanted this, I can take the pieces off, and apart from that, let's see I wanted about this much to use. Let's do that. Make sure it's going to swing clear of my face. I don't want to lose any eyes or bones. And then, a bit on here. So as you can see, I have this stick for a club. And then this bit comes off. And then there we are. This particular actual wood is quite brittle. I'll try to show you in a tree test. But uh, it's the right kind of idea anyway. Maybe it's not as brittle. Fresh. <laughs> okay, this one would have been okay. But uh, I didn't quite like this bend anyway, so... So here we are, change of scenery. Oh, apologies for it being such an ugly change of scenery, but there you go. So, in terms of what I'm going to do with this, one of the final candidates, uh, I shall start by cutting this part off the handle end, and then when I decide how much length I want, I can maybe chop more or less off of this, and maybe I'll chop a bit more or a bit less off the bottom. I'll basically, I might, I mean, I've had many times when I have clubs, and I do several cuts, I just play it safe, I make sure there's going to be a little bit too much and I just work back in sections until I'm happy because if I cut off too much early on I can't put it back on can I? So yeah, we'll start with this bit because I know I don't want these lumps coming out. I will probably just saw it off around here. A bit more work for me but this bulbous part might be good for fitting the hand. So for this I ideally recommend a good sharp, that's not very sharp, a good sharp tenon saw. Now you can really use pretty much any saw, or if you are a bit more traditionalist or on a low budget, you could use an axe. But I would most recommend A, a saw, and B, ideally a tenon saw like this. So I could just go... 
I'll just find the ideal spot, probably about here. My vice won't fit this, so I shall have to hold it and keep it there by hand, which is brilliant. <coughs> I'll be back in a minute. Oh, oh I'm shit at sawing. Oh, there we go. Oh. So this I can use either to make two sticks, or I'll I'll just use a firewood to be honest. So we have this. So here we have it, sawn off and ready. Then we have this top part to do. Now having a look at it now, in context with this taken away, I think I'll probably do it to about here. And I've decided rather than doing just a straight across cut, I will actually try to make it more diagonal. It's more work for me, you can hear I'm getting a bit out of breath from that exertion already, but I'm fat, so there you go. Um, basically, I have that sort of cross cut, so it's got a bit more heft at the uh, tip. But it's cut a bit back so it doesn't retain quite so much of this bulk. Just sort of a compromise. So here we have the, I wouldn't say finished product, but here are the finished cuts. So I've looked at this and I'm very satisfied. Basically we've got, this will be a handle end. You can choke up right to the end without it slipping off so much. Got this part, obviously. This part here of the knot and the uh, branch will come out. This makes a good striking end. I have done what I said about the compromise. It slopes here. You'll notice it's a bit uneven, but it'll do. So it's got some mass at this end, but it's sloped off so it's not so chunky and it's not too heavy at this end. So it's going to be reasonably decent for swinging, but uh, it's still a bit big in my hands. So that's when I'll be using tools to get rid of some of this moss. I'll probably use a knife, especially something like a draw knife, which I happen to have in my collection. But basically some sharp knife to carve away maybe some of the bark, reveal the wood underneath. And then once I've got that ready, I can use sandpaper or some other abrasive, maybe even my belt sander and a mask, to then basically smooth it down and make it fit more snugly and securely in the hand. a knife made from a spoon if you're wondering. This. So here we have the juicy wood underneath. That's going to be the sap wood because this is a branch. It doesn't hold well in the vise. It's too small. I wanted to buy a new one for years but never got around to it. Hold securely. There we go. But this is all about doing what you can with the tools you've got. An important safety note when doing these sorts of cuts, not just simple drawers and scrapes, but actual cuts that can make your knife fly like that, make sure you're always cutting away from you and not towards you, or you might carve yourself open. Especially if you've got a really sharp knife, which this isn't really, but still. In fact, I might go and get a real knife. Here's one I made. Which was from a file. I actually had a video about that. This is carving more into the wood. In case you're wondering, this is a draw knife. I use it like so. Actually, there might not even be enough clearance for me to use it properly. Is a very rough cut version. 
It doesn't look pretty, and believe me, it doesn't really feel pretty. But this is basically all the knife work done. I've done a bit on here with the handle so it fits a bit more snugly, but a lot of it is going to be sanded away. And apart from the fact that I've had a piece of sandpaper I use of hand, well, of by hand, I have also got a belt sander, and back when I was a kid and used to make a lot more of these, I did not have a belt sander, so hopefully that should make things easier. But again, you don't need those sorts of power tools. I've literally just got a piece of sandpaper, this one's old and used, and just basically give it a bit of this. And it's rough sandpaper, so it gives it a bit of a grain to it, a sort of a roughness. So it's, it's smooth in terms of it won't hurt your hands, but it's rough in terms of it will stay in your hand rather than try to fly out. And then this sort of, I guess you could call it almost masturbatory kind of action. I don't know. Sort of rub it along. Loads of sawdust, so I'd recommend having a well-ventilated area. And then, well, I'll show you what the results look like. So here it is. Finished product. Um, in the middle of sanding, I found out I wanted to do a bit more on handle, so I cut it a bit more. But I smoothed it over, and I know the light's getting a bit funny on it, but let's give it a close-up. You can see a few more rough bits, because I actually ended up taking an axe to it at one point. But it's fairly smooth, it fits securely in the hand. It's got a bit here to stop, it, stop my hand from sliding off. Got the rest of this, and of course a good striking end. I'm happy with it. Now for our second item, this, I'm basically going to leave it pretty much untouched. At the most, I might at some point cut a couple of inches or something off this because it's a bit over six feet tall. It is a bit heavy at this end. This end is narrower, but this end is a bit heavier. And it's quite a bit of a heft compared to usual sort of quarter stuff, but not really any proper modifications, so we'll skip to our third item, which is this. This is one of the ones that you, sh that you saw earlier, and obviously I'm going to cut bits off here, because this isn't, this is nothing, it's just going to fall to pieces, it'll bend, it'll become a squishy bit that doesn't do much impact because there's a bit, you know, folded over there and kind of absorbing the force, and just causing air resistance and all sorts, and of course this bit is split, so I don't want that to end up carrying all the way up and destroying it, so I shall probably cut it off about mm, here-ish, wherever I see the split ends, and then of course that'll keep it structurally sound, it'll still have plenty of length to be a two-handed sort of lightweight club. So here it is. By the way, this is the uh, draw knife I used, and this is the hatchet I used earlier, but uh, I'll get the saw. I shall do this part. Uh, split seem to go. I'll try here. Yeah. So as you can see here, no more splits. Maybe something around here. I'll check, but most likely not. So that's all fine. On to the next stage. As you can tell, I'm not an experienced carpenter. I'll need smoothing over. This has been done. It's got this finished. 
And then all I need to do now is maybe smooth over these bits on the ends. Just makes it a bit nicer to the touch. Makes it look nicer and smoother, as well as actually physically being such. And then, do the usual on the handle. And like I said, you don't need power tools. I'll show you now. Just literally get some sandpaper, rough grit, so it's not as much effort. I think I'll just do a bit of smoothing on the uh, bark for this particular club. I quite like it with its uh, style and theme. Some texture still, but yet, when I, if and when I need to, I can give a good bit of swing and bam. So this is quite lightweight and quite sturdy. It's not something that relies on its weight. It's got it's probably not even a pound in weight, if even that. So uh, it basically, because it's a longer club, this wouldn't work if it was about you know this length. It helps to have a longer club. I always recommend. If you think that, you know, something short will do the trick, imagine you're staving off an opponent with something like a spear or a two-handed sword or even an arming sword. You'd want that reach. The more reach you've got with a weapon, the better. As long as you're not sacrificing performance. And in this case, it's really good. It's light enough and fast enough that it isn't hefty and unwieldy. And yet, at the same time, it's still got that impact to it. So that's good. And like I said, with, it, it helps with that leverage, having it longer, so it can do that impact. I suppose it also makes a good walking stick, but this ain't a walking stick. <laughs> so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I guess once you've learnt all of this, you'll become a king of clubs. <laughs> and uh, so I know you watch this all the way through, do this for me. You have a comment, just any comment on the channel, you know, anywhere on the video, and include the number 57. That way I'll know that you really did watch the whole thing and it's not just a, a two minute watch and a quick comment to say a thing. All right, so uh, enjoy yourselves and have a good day now. ta -ra.